Let me confirm. Hallelujah. Okay. Then let me increase the volume of that one. Makoshata lagaraya. Le koshente le mokondo le mokoshata lagaraya. Le koshente le mokondo le mokoshata lagaraya. Le koshata la mana le mokoshende le mokondo le lagaraya. Ya kashata le mokondo le lagaraya. Ma konda le mokoshete le lagaraya. Alleluia. Ma koshata la lagaraya. That we thank you, we appreciate on him. We say may your be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, that we pray you speak to us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let the eyes of our understanding be open today in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And I pray the Lord Almighty will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to be taking another dimension today. And for those who have been following us, you will discover that my interpreter is not by my side. So let's see how God will move. And I pray God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. He went on a serious errand. Uh, without wasting much of our time, we go quickly to the message of today. And if you are with us, and I want you to pick up your pen because there are strange things you are going to be jotting down today again. I give you one assurance. The eyes of your understanding is going to be open today. We are trusting God for that. And so shall it be in, in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that have been following us, you will discover that we have been talking about the wisdom of prayer. And today we are going to be talking about series four. The wisdom of prayer, series four. And if you are with us in the uh, last few weeks, we started by making us to understand that it is not only the spirit of prayer that you need, that you also need the wisdom of prayer. And I make us to understand that the spirit of prayer enables you to pray long and the wisdom of 
for prayer enable you to pray right. And if you are with us critically, you will discover that I make us to understand that it's not enough for you to know how to pray long. You must also know how to pray right. And it is not also enough for you to know how to pray right. You must also know how to pray wrong. So when talking about the principle of prayer, when talking about the protocol of prayer, you must understand how to balance that spirit of prayer and the wisdom of prayer. And I make us to understand that one, the spirit of prayer enables you to pray wrong, the wisdom of prayer enables you to pray right. And the second one, we begin to enter into another dimension of the principle of prayer that we need to know. And I make us to understand that there are six factors you need to know about prayer. And I said, the first thing you must know what to pray. The second thing you must know when to pray. The third thing you must know how to pray. You must know where to pray. You must know who to pray to. And you must know who is qualified to pray. Because when you begin to look at Luke chapter 11, when the disciples come to Jesus, he began to ask them, the disciples began to ask Jesus a simple question. Teach us how to pray. Teach us to pray, like I said. That is Luke 11 verses 1 to 2. The Bible God did not say, teach us how to pray. So what the disciples were asking Jesus is not for Jesus to teach them how to pray, but to teach them to pray. Merely teach us everything pertaining to prayer. Teach us everything that has to do with prayer. So that make us understand that there are six things that have to do with prayer that you must understand if you want to journey deeply into the realm of prayer. And I said, the first thing you must know what to pray. The second thing you must know how to pray. The third thing you must know when to pray. You must know where to pray. You must know when to pray. You must know who to pray to. And you must know who is qualified to pray. And I make us understand that it's not enough to know what to pray. You must know how to pray. It is not enough to know how to pray. You must know where to pray. It is not enough to know where to pray. You must know where to pray. It is not enough also to know where to pray. You must know who is qualified to pray. It is not also enough to know who is qualified to pray. You must also know who to pray to. And last week we begin to enter into another dimension of the reason why many praying people are behind in life. We begin to ask the question that why are praying nature behind in life? Why are praying continent behind in life? Why are praying people behind in life? Why are praying denomination behind in life? We must not understand that there are many denominations no we pray in this country, but when you look at the protocol and the principle guiding their life, you will discover that they are behind in life. Then we begin to say why. And then as we will begin to explain the third factor why many praying people are behind. Yes, now today we go into another deep teaching, the part four of when the wisdom of prayer, part four. Yes, okay. Holy Ghost. Open the eyes of what are standing today in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now. Amen. The knowledge of what to pray. Because when you begin to look at the six factors of prayer we have been mentioning, one of the major problems of many Christians is that they don't know what to pray. And we want to be digging, digging deep on the factor of this dimension today, which is having the knowledge of what to pray. When you look at the book of James chapter, is it or two? He said, many people ask and miss. Not because they don't ask, they are asking what they are asking means. And simply because they are asking them means the Bible does not understand that they don't get answer to their prayer. So you can be praying five hours and be praying means. <laughs> you can be praying three hours and be praying means. So, and what the Bible makes us to understand is that it is not enough to pray. You must have the knowledge of what to pray. And many people have he did not that speaking in tongue, claiming that the reason why they are speaking in tongue is simply because they don't know what to pray. The Bible said in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26, who is reading for us. And if you are following us, I wanted to put it at the comment section. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Uh -huh. 26, Romans 8, 26. Uh -huh. 26. Yeah. Likewise, the spirits also help us our infirmity. Uh -huh. But we know not what we should pray. We know not what we should pray. We that is, this is one of the weaknesses in the body of Christ. There are many Christians that don't know what to pray as they ought to. Mm. Kai. But the Spirit itself. No, he it said, no, let's take it one after the other. Yes, sir. If you are with us, I want to put that number in the comment section. Romans chapter 8, 
verses 26. He said, This is one of our witnesses. That is, as a Christian, there are many people that have a certain dimension of witness. And the witness is that they don't know what to pray as they ought to. Now, can I permit me to tell you this? There must be a time in your life where you should know what to pray. That is, it is not something to boast about that your witness is that you don't know what to pray for. Mm. <laughs> Truly, there are seasons in your life that you don't that you will get to a stage where you don't need, you don't have the knowledge of what to pray. There are stages in your life where your witness should be what that you don't know what to pray. But there are seasons in your life where it should no longer be your witness again. Mm. I repeat. There are seasons in your life. We are truly your weaknesses that you don't know what to pray. But there must be a season in your life where it should no longer be your weakness that you don't know what to pray. It is like you have a son. The child is four, three, three to four years. The weakness of every baby is that they don't know what to ask. If their father asks them, ask me anything, you see them asking, you see a, a four years old child, ask you for an airplane. You see a five years old child asking for gym. One of the ways to know a baby is that they don't know what. They don't know what to pray for. They don't have the knowledge of what to ask their father. So it's a general weakness for a baby not to have the knowledge of what to pray for. But there must be a stage you will get on in your life where that should no longer be your weakness. That's the point. I repeat, there should be a stage in your life where not knowing what to pray for should no longer be your witness. Mm -hmm. So, building your prayer life on Romans chapter 8, verses 26 should be once upon a time if you have spent five to six years in Christ. Mm, yes, sir. <laughs> I repeat again, this is Paul talking in this place. This same Paul cannot be saying this after spending 15 years in Christ. Paul cannot be saying his weakness is that he don't know what to pray for after spending 20 years in Christ. It should be the fact of a baby that there must be a stage in your life where you don't know what to pray for. But you must get to a certain stage in your life where you should know what to pray for. So if you don't know what to pray for, you need to have the knowledge of it. So the purpose of this teaching is to gather men who don't really have the knowledge of what to pray for to teach them what to pray for. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if this is your weakness, if Romans chapter 6, verse 26, uh, Romans 8, 26 is your weakness, I want you to gather in this place. Mm -hmm. I want to teach you what to pay for. Because there must be a stages in your life where it should no longer be your weakness that you don't know what to pay for as you ought to. I repeat again. I'm not disputing this Bible verse. You must understand when scripture is progressive in nature. There are certain dimensions of scripture that are not absolute. They are progressive. It's like saying when it, there are stages in your life where you say, this I don't want to do. I find myself doing it. There should be a stage here like that in your life. But there must be a stage in your life where you have, you have come out of that dimension where things you don't want to do, you don't do them. The thing you love to do, you do. <laughs> Because you have entered into the economy of Ephesians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, that Christ in you, making you to win, and to what? And to do. Mm -hmm. I, I will, I will, a, a, somebody who has spent a mature Christian saying, things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Le koshanta la gadaya. Le kondo le moshata. I repeat again. There should be a stage in your life where you hold on the scripture, where the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6, chapter 7, that things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. But that it is written in the scripture, that does not mean you should not be using that same Bible verse to justify yourself after spending 20, 30 years in Christ. It's a language for the baby Christians. So same to Romans chapter 8, verse 26, there should be a stage in your life where you don't know what to pray for. But there must be a stage in your life where you should come to the immaturity with the knowledge of what to pray for. There must be a stages in your life where you should have the knowledge of what to pray for. There should be a stages in your life where you should be asking questions from God, making your supplication known to God, and God will say, Yes, this is a mature child. <laughs> Holy Ghost. So let me settle that in your mind now. 
the Roman age chapter 36, there should be a stage in your life where your weakness should be that you don't know what to pray for. And there should also be a stage in your life where that is no longer your weakness again because you can do all things to cut the what? The stretching us. There are some weakness we don't need to be celebrating again after spending many years in Christ. <laughs> there are weakness we don't need to be celebrating again after spending some certain years in Christ. And one of the weakness we don't need to be celebrating again is this Romans chapter 8 verse 26. We have the Bible said our weakness is that we don't know what to pray for. So there should be a stage in your life where you should know what to pray for. There should be a stages. So, and if you don't know what to pray for, if you're having a problem of prayer point, you are struggling with prayer point, you don't know what to pray for, you are having a doubt whether what you're praying for is acceptable before God. Get that in this place now. Where God will begin to open the eyes of our understanding to the fact of what to pray for. No, 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 no. Le condo le mou kosente li gada. Li kanda le mou doya. Now let me say this. Most of people, this is where they hide their weakness. And I want to correct it now. Each time they are speaking a tongue, they claim the reason why they are speaking a tongue is simply because they don't know what to pray for. Permit me to correct the unscriptural understanding that many have about speaking a tongue. I repeat, theory of scriptural understanding that many have about speaking a tongue. Number one, it is wrong to be claiming you are praying a tongue because you, what you are saying, the devil doesn't understand. <laughs> Not people say let us speak in tongues to confuse the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> so we say let us speak in tongues so that so that the gate of hell will not have the understanding of what we are saying. Come back here. There is no scripture that says the kingdom of darkness does not understand speaking a tongue. There's no scripture that says when you speak in tongue, the devil doesn't understand what you're saying. Mm. What the Bible says is that when you speak in tongue, you are speaking mystery, and no man understands. It didn't say no devil will understand. Can somebody bring that over us? Mm. Roman, first Corinthians 14. Mm -hmm. Verses 2. Verses 2. Yeah. So he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, eh? He speaketh not unto men. He didn't speak unto men, eh? But to God. Uh -huh. For no man understands. No one understands. The Bible does not say no devil will understand. Can you put it there? Romans uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 40 verse 2. Yes, I want somebody to put it in the comment section. Yes, sir. Mm. 1 Corinthians 42. Mm. He said, when you are speaking a tongue, you are speaking mystery. No man understands. It didn't say no devil will understand. It is not scriptural to say when you are speaking a tongue, devil doesn't understand. There is no scripture that says so. <laughs> so each time you are speaking the tongue, you are not confusing the devil. The only language that confuses the devil is the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every nation bow. Listen, the condo limo shataya. Yeah, it has been posted. For he that speaketh in another tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understands what he's saying. The Bible didn't say no demon understand. What the Bible is making us to understand here is that when you are speaking in tongue, no man understands. But I'm using this opportunity to tell you that when you speak in tongue, devil is hearing you clearly. <laughs> he's even understanding what you're saying. Get this. The only thing that is secret is what God kept, not what man kept. No man can keep any secret from the devil. The only personality that can keep secret from the devil is God. Is God. So, the only thing that I kept secret is what God kept secret, not what men kept secret. You can write that one down. I read. The only thing that is kept secret is what God kept secret, not what men kept secret. No man can keep secret from the devil. <laughs> he understands the thought of your heart. He's hearing what you are saying in your heart. So, even though some, some people, you know some people said, ah, 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 the moment, you know some motivation I talk. They say the moment you say your plan, don't don't say it out. He said keep your plan so that after you are fulfilling it, you cannot say it out. Come back here. <laughs> Come back here. Don't, don't let us be fooling ourselves with the body of Christ. That is not the nature of God. The nature of God the Father is that before He do anything, He will say it first. Every of God's plan, before He will do it, He will first say it. 
Before Jesus Christ came, God have said it many years ago. Anything God will do, he will say, he will say it to himself as a confession of it. He will say it to mad will hear. Then if that is the nature of your father, how will you be having a plan and be saying you want to keep it secret so that devil will not hear? <laughs> Tell devil your plan, he can't stop it. Kalebo <laughs> Shatalagalaya. Ah! Get this. There is no secret you can hide from the devil. The only personality that can hide secret from the devil is God. So don't come and say the reason why you are speaking the tongue is that you don't know you don't want the devil to know what you are saying. He already know what you are saying because if speaking the tongue is a language of angel, is an angelic language. Devil is more for falling is a fallen angel. So maybe how will somebody be deported from America and you are saying he doesn't understand the language of America? <laughs> if somebody is falling, hallelujah. Born and brought up in America, or let me say born and brought up in Ghana. And they deported him to Nigeria. You know that it's better you are deported to Nigeria than you are deported out of Nigeria. <laughs> or it's better I don't know. Now, after spending many years in Nigeria, after spending many years in, in UK, or spending many years in Ghana, he was deported to Nigeria. And you are not telling me that the person will not understand the language of Ghana again. No. Same to the devil. He was once in heaven. He understands the language of angel. So he's speaking the tongue is a language of angel. I want you to know that devil have understanding of it clearly. <laughs> devil that look at star and you know that the king has been born and you say you want to be adding your plan from that devil it's impossible <laughs> so that your death that the devil know your plan does not mean he can stop it that is it is even better to say your plan to the devil because he has a role to play in it there are certain role that devil need to play in fulfilling your vision <laughs> unless that vision is not from God I agree. If your vision is from God, say it like devil here. He has a role to play in that in that vision. There are certain parts of your vision that it is only devil that God will use to push you to your destination. Because it will come as if something negative is happening to you. You will not begin to discover that God is working everything together for your what? For your good. So number one of scriptural understand your scriptural reason why you should be claiming you are speaking the tongue is not so that devil doesn't hear what you are saying the bible never says from genesis to revelation there's no scripture that says when you speak in tongue devil did not understand what the bible makes us understand is that when you are speaking the tongue you are speaking to what you are speaking an unknown language and the bible says no man understand the bible did not say no god no devil understand so i'm saying this to you that devil is understand angelic language you understand the language of your thoughts. <laughs> you understand the language of your spirit. You understand the language of your mind. You also understand the language of your mouth. When Jesus was declared, I will declare Jesus. I said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. is a voice of the spirit. And the same, Jesus, the same devil came to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. He said, If you are the sons of God, who told him? Kai. For you to know that the devil have full understanding of the language of eternity. So the only thing that is secret is not what men kept from the devil. The only thing that is secret is what God kept from the devil. <laughs> no man can keep anything secret from the devil. So the reason why you should be speaking it up is not because you want to confuse the kingdom of darkness. The Bible didn't say so. What the Bible said clearly is that when you speak it up, you are edifying yourself. So you are speaking it up, don't build yourself. The two places where the Bible talks specifically about the advantage of speaking the tongue, it makes us understand that when you speak the tongue, you are edifying yourself. Then the book of Jude also, he said, building up yourself. So the major reason why we are speaking the tongue is that we are building ourselves, not because we don't want devil to understand what we are saying. It's at this sort. To be saying you don't want devil to know what you are saying. Who is devil? It's sort of an injury upon his other, it's sort of an injury. Carry more shatter like that. So, number one reason why many are speaking in tongues, which is very wrong, is that they claim to be speaking in tongues because devil, they don't want devil to understand, or they don't want demon to understand what they're saying. Number two wrong special reasons why many are speaking in tongues. Wrong reasons why many are speaking in tongues. Carry more here. The another wrong reason why you should not speak in tongue is that you claim to be speaking in tongue because you don't know what to pray for. There's no scripture that says we should speak in tongue as an alternative because we don't know what to pray for. There's no scripture that says so. 
<laughs> and if you are following me, like, if there's any scripture that says so, you can bring it out. We are the Bible said the reason why we should speak in tongues is because we don't know what to you know, we need to be very careful in this generation. And I, I understand we are in the generation of revelation. But let us be very careful with the revelation that doesn't have a basis in the scripture. And I'm talking to this our dispensational man of God. I repeat, mean, let us be very careful with our scriptural revelation that doesn't have a basis in the scripture. That is our heresy I establish in the body of Christ. You will be talking about realms, talking about dimensions, talking about immortal immortality. But bring it to scripture. Let us see the basis of what you are saying in the scripture. <laughs> There, there is no scripture that said we should speak in tongues as an alternative of the fact that we don't know what to pray for. We misunderstood Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 36. The Bible said, He said our weakness is that we don't know what to pray for as we ought to. He now said, The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Can you read it again? Romans 8. 8 to the 6. Romans 8 to the 6. I don't know if it can be projected again. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. The spirit also helps our infirmities. Eh? Well, we don't know what we should. Pray we don't do. know what to pray as we should. How should we pray? Eh? But the spirit itself makes things as. Wait, the Bible didn't say you should speak in tongues. It said the spirit has taken the responsibility of that by making intercession, intercession for us. Eh? We, 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 we grow me. Eh? Which cannot be. We cannot be other. Wait. Ah. Uh, Wait. The first point on that scripture is, is that scripture is that our weakness is that we don't know what to pray for. It, not, it didn't say that we should take up a technical way of not praying to justify the fact that we don't know what to pray for. He said the Holy Spirit already take responsibility of that. That the Holy Spirit by Himself has begun to pray for us. The Holy Spirit has begun to intercede for us simply because truly we don't know what to pray as we ought to. So the Bible did not say the Holy Spirit is praying in us. The Bible did not say the Holy Spirit is praying through us. He says it's praying for us. Carry <laughs> Now get the difference. There is one thing for the Holy Spirit of praying to be praying in you. There is another thing for the Holy Spirit of to be praying through you. Why there is another thing for the Holy Spirit to be praying for you? I repeat again. There is one thing for the Holy Ghost to be praying in you. There is another thing for the Holy Ghost. To be praying to you, there's another thing for the Holy Ghost to be praying for you. You must know the difference between the three. So what this Bible say? This Bible did not say the Holy Spirit is praying in us. The Bible did not say the Holy Spirit is praying through us. What the Bible say emphatically is that the Holy Spirit is what? Is praying for on the last statement for us. For instance, if I say I'm doing something for you, it means it's none of your business. Don't involve. If you involve it means I'm doing it with you. But the Bible did not say Holy Spirit is praying with us. In this one verse, there are times Holy Spirit pray with us. There are times Holy Spirit pray in us. There are times Holy Spirit pray to us. But what this Bible verse is saying, it's not saying Holy Spirit is praying in us. This Bible verse is not saying Holy Spirit is praying through us. This Bible verse is not saying Holy Spirit is praying for us. It's not praying, it's praying in us. What he said emphatically is that the Holy Spirit is praying for us. So you must know the difference between those those four. So when he's praying for us, he's different from when he's praying to you. So if he's doing something for you, it means it's none of your business. So he has taken up the responsibility because your witness is that you don't know what to pray for. <laughs> Holy Ghost. And he said, he's groaning. Wait, this is another hero. That my generation has built doctrine upon. Holy Spirit help us at this Joshua. Please let me read that one verse again. Romans 8 26. Uh -huh. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. Uh -huh. But we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know what to pray for as we ought. Uh -huh. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. The Spirit itself makes intercession for us. With groanings. It is the Holy Spirit that is groaning, not you. <laughs> the Bible didn't say you should be groaning. What is my generation are doing now? And they are calling prayer, building a wrong doctrine upon the scripture is that they are groaning. And the Bible did not say you should groan. No, don't get me wrong. Let me get the balance. You can groan, but this Bible verse is not saying you should groan. This Bible verse is saying that the Holy Ghost is the one doing the groaning. 
and cannot correct this again. Groni is not. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you. Check your dictionary meaning of groni. I don't know. I don't know if anybody can bring it out and post it in the comment section. The dictionary meaning of groni. You will discover that it was totally different. It is totally different from what the generation is doing. <laughs> It's an emotional way of, of, of expressing things that you can't alter in words. That is, he has something to do with the sad mood. has something to do with the situation where it affects, it alters your feeling. But you just don't know the right word to use. You started, you feel bitter. You feel sorrowful. You started crying. <laughs> the physical best way to express groaning is crying. Not you just not even cry this shouting. You just keep quiet and tears is coming out of your eyes. Because you are in a situation where you don't have the right choice of what to explain it. Can somebody bring it out? Is there any definition? There are two or three definitions. And I want us to read three. And if it's possible, you can bring it out in the comment section. The definition, the meaning of groaning. <laughs> Do you have any definition there? To make a long deep sound, eh? Because you are annoyed. You are annoyed, eh? Upset. Upset. Or in pain. Or in pain. To make a what? To make a deep sound. A deep sound. Long deep sound. Long deep sound. Because you are what? You are annoyed. You are, annoyed. You are upset. You are, upset. You are in pain. And this is the only girl doing this for us, not you doing it. So there's nothing like groaning in prayer. I don't know where this our generation come out with those 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 theology. There's a definition here. Uh -huh. A groan is a brief, strong, deep throated sound. Uh -huh. Emitted involuntarily. Please, uh, again, again. A, a groan. A groan. Is a, is a brief, strong. Brief, strong. Deep throated sound. Uh -huh. Emitted involuntarily. Emitted involuntarily. Uh -huh. Under pressure. That is you are under pressure. It's not something you form. I want to go and grow for one hour. Why would you say you want to go? Is that foolishness? Say you want to go and grow for one hour. Where, where are you growing to? What is causing the pain? And that's for what? No, but to this man over didn't say we should grow. He said the Holy Spirit intercedes for us through what? Through growing. It is the Holy Ghost that is doing the growing, not you. Kale <laughs> Moshatanagaraya. So, number one wrong way of praying in tongue is to think you are praying in tongue because the devil doesn't understand what you are saying. Number two wrong way of praying in tongue is to think you are praying in tongue as an alternative way that your weakness is that you don't know what to pray for. Can somebody write those two points there? Number one wrong reason of praying in tongue. Number one, the Bible didn't say when you pray in tongue, no devil understand. He said no man. He said you are talking mystery and he said no man understand. He didn't say no devil understand. That's number one. Number two, it is very wrong to think you are playing the tongue as an alternative way of saying you don't know what to pray for. If you don't know what to pray for, ask questions from God. <laughs> How can you be 15 years in Christ and you are saying your weakness is that you don't know what to pray for? That's the ignorance of the highest order. 15 years in Christ, 10 years in Christ, 5 years in Christ. Even the same Paul that wrote this, he get the Sunday stage, he begin to teach the church of Corinthians how what to pray, begin to teach the church of Ephesia what to pray, making them to understand that you should pray for the wisdom, spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon you. He enters the church of Corinthians and begin to teach them what to pray for. There should be a stage in your life where you may not know what to pray for because of your spiritual, no level of spiritual understanding, but there must be a stage in your life where you should know what to pray for. <laughs> <laughs> Am I condemning speaking in tongue? No, I think you've seen me. I've speak in tongue many times now. But the major scriptural point, the reason why the Bible makes said we should speak in tongue is to edify our spirit. Can you can we confirm that? Five Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians fourteen three. Eh? Uh -huh. First Corinthians fourteen three. Uh -huh. For he that prophesies uh -huh. unto men uh -huh. to edification uh -huh. and extortion uh -huh. and comfort. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. edified himself. Edify himself. He that speaks in a no tongue. Did what? Edify himself. Edify means to build up yourself. So the scripture that is the way the Bible said we should speak in tongues is to what? To build ourselves. And do not confirm this. He said, building up yourself in the most holy faith. By what? Speaking. By speaking in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 
So you are not praying in the Holy Ghost thinking devil doesn't understand. You are not praying in the Holy Ghost because your weakness is that you don't know what to pray for. There's no scripture that says those two things. It's an error from the pit. Can I say from the pit of error or from the pit of religion? <laughs> so that's number two. Number three wrong way of speaking in tongue is to think you need to exhaust speaking in tongue more than speaking, praying and understanding. is a wrong teaching. There is no scripture that says which will exhaust speaking in tongue above praying and understanding. That is, there is no scripture that says which will exhaust praying in tongue above praying and understanding. And there is no other scripture that says which will exhaust praying and understanding than praying in tongue. You must balance the two. Should we confirm that in the Bible? We say again. Because this generation will need to go back to the scripture. <laughs> we have lost, but we don't know. That is why we claim we know much. We are producing little resource. Most of what we claim we know, they are junks. They are not scriptural. I'm talking to this generation. We are far from scriptural truth. We are far. And that is why it becomes my cry for the rising of teachers in this generation to begin to bring the body of Christ back to the truth of the scripture. We are far. Let us see what the Bible said. Concerning speaking the tongue and praying and understanding. Romans chapter 14, verses 14. Uh, this is Paul talking. This is Paul talking. Let us see what Paul is saying here. Uh, 14, uh -huh. 14. Yeah. I know uh -huh. I'm persuaded by uh -huh. Lord Jesus uh -huh. that there is nothing unclean of itself. First Corinthians 14 14. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians 14 14. 14, 14. Uh -huh. For if I pray in an unknown talk, if I pray in an unknown talk, my spirit pray. My spirit pray. But my understanding is unfruitful. My understanding is unfruitful. How can you that it is when they eat? It means pray. In tongue has disadvantage. Mm. That's what Paul is saying here. Mm. He's making us understand that even though praying in tongue has some level of advantage, it also has some disadvantage. And the disadvantage is that when you are praying in tongue, your understanding that God has given to you as a gift becomes unfruitful. Mm. And that is why we lost creativity in Africa. We can pray in tongue, we can't think. We suspend our understanding, claiming we are praying in tongue for 10 hours. What kind of useless, useless way of living in life is that? The same Paul said I pray in tongue more than you all. But that same Paul, when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul never exhausts speaking the tongue in this Bible verse. It is in fact, he brings prophecy about speaking the tongue. Where do this my generation begin to exhaust speaking the tongue? Show us the scripture. Show us the scripture that exhausts speaking the tongue above every other thing. Before you know it's that I speak in capital letter. Come back here. Don't let us, don't let us, let us be loud where the Bible is loud and let us be silent where the Bible is silent. Because this body of Christ, we have a problem of being loud where the Bible is silent and being silent where the Bible is loud. It's a weakness in the body of Christ. And that's the main reason why the issue of tithing was so escalated, was so loud, given to the poor, was so, was so silent. You will see a past, you will see a whole church emphasizing on tithing, they don't talk about giving. About giving, giving to poor, giving to the needy. We have a problem of being loud where the scripture is silence, and a problem of being silence where the scripture is loud. When you take time to study this book of First Corinthians chapter fourteen, you will discover clearly that Paul never exhausts speaking the tongue about praying and understanding. He never exhausts speaking the tongue about prophecy. Tell me again, verse fourteen. Verse 14 or 15? Uh -huh. 14. For if I pray in a long time, my spirit prays. My spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. My understanding is unfruitful. Uh -huh. Verse 15. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. Uh -huh. I will pray with the I will also pray in understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing in the spirit. I will also sing, will also sing in understanding. Also. God didn't give you spirit as a gift alone. You have a spirit as a gift. You have your soul as a gift. You have your body as a gift. You must live your life in a balanced way where you will focus on the spirit, focus on the soul, and focus on the body. If you leave one behind, you will suffer it. If you are building your spirit, you are not building your mind, you will suffer it. If you are building your spirit, you are building your mind, you are not building your physical body by it, you will suffer it. Kai. If you are building your body also, building your mind, you don't build your spirit by speaking in tongue, you also suffer it. You must understand the balance. Praying in tongue, praying in understanding, also build your physical body. Paul himself said here, he said, if I speak in tongue, my understanding is what? He's unfruitful. He said, because of that, I will speak in tongue, I will also pray. 
Are you understanding? Kai, are we regarding the prayer in No. Are we exalting it? No, also. <laughs> I repeat. Are we regarding the prayer in tongues? No. Are we exalting it? No. But we must put it in the balance. Let us put it where the scripture put it. When we pray in tongues, you edify yourself. And the Bible says your soul, your mind, your understanding is unfruitful. How can your spirit be developing and your understanding is unfruitful? And I said, I said to us in last week, I said one of the things that is angry prayer of many Christians is that we have a man with living spirit, with what? Undeveloped mind, pray. Because God can't give you what you ask. He gives you what you can manage. So you must learn to develop your mind by praying and thinking and understanding. So I've just mentioned three scriptural reasons why men pray. What's the first one? Number one, pray thinking that devil doesn't understand. What's number two? Pray thinking there is an alternative way of praying because you don't know what to pray for. Number three, pray in the talk because you think it's better than praying in understanding. No. The scripture never exhausts about praying and understanding. And the scripture never exhausts praying and understanding about speaking the tongue. There are, there are, you must be equal, you must be balanced with the three. <laughs> Holy Ghost, my shaitan, I got that. Now, somebody is not saying, if that should be the case, how will I know what to pray for? I'm looking for a scripture. I don't know if somebody can help me to bring it out. He said, whatsoever you desire, ask in faith. And the Bible says that God will grant your heart desire. Whatsoever you desire. I think it should be Mark. Because we want to talk about how to know what to pray for. One of the best ways to know what to pray for is to convert your desire to prayer points. Number one, convert your pain to prayer points. Number two, convert your worry to prayer points. Number four, convert your... Uh, what is the first one? Convert your desire to what? Prayer. To prayer points. Pain. Number two, convert your pain to prayer points. What's number three? Convert your, your worry to prayer points. Number four, convert your fear to prayer points. <laughs> I don't know if somebody can write it down. Number one, convert your convert your what? Your your desire to prayer points. The moment your desire is in alignment with the desire of God. You convert it to prayer point. There are, it, it is the will of God for you to be healed. Then that is your prayer point. If you are sick, it is the desire of God for you to be rich. Then praying for prosperity is a good prayer point. So you must be able to know how to convert your your desire is a language. What God does expect from you is to communicate it in a language that eternity will understand. So every one of us have a desire. If where you are, you are comfortable with it, you don't need to pray. So how would you say you don't know what to pray for when you're supposed to be in level 8 and you're level 4 and you say you don't know what to pray for? <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody now. If you desire prosperity, then prosperity becomes a prayer point. As long as your desire is in alignment with the desire of God, then that is a prayer point. Convert your desire to prayer point. The only way your desire will not be granted is when it is for lost. If that desire is not for purpose that has to do with your life and have to do with the kingdom of God, God will not grant it. I repeat, if your desire has no advantage to your destiny and you also have advantage, has, has no advantage of the kingdom, God will not grant it. That was what the Bible was talking about, a wrong desire, a lustful desire. I think it is, it is, it is James chapter 3. Is it James 3, right? Confirm it. Let us bring it out. It should be James 3. Huh? He said they pray, they pay a miss. Is it James 3 or James 2? Someone should confirm it for us. And if you are following us in the comment section, if you can remind us, it will be James 3. Just bring it down. Either James 3 or James 2. Where the Bible said they ask a miss. They ask, they don't get because they ask a miss. James what? Confirm either James 2, James 3 or James 4. One out of the two. Is that James 3? Hallelujah. Who is, who, is, who is giving it to us? Where the, where the Bible said, you, you ask and you ask him. It's just James 1 chapter 1. It is 1. 
James 4.3. James 4.3. What is it? James 4.3. Uh-huh. 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 James 4.3. Uh-huh. James 4.3. Uh-huh. If you are following us at the comment section, you can put it there. Uh-huh. Let go shut down like that. Uh-huh. He asked. He asked. Because he asked. He asked. You ask at least. Uh-huh. He may consume it upon you, your loss. You want to consume it upon your loss. Upon your desire. So when your desire is not in alignment with the desire of God for you, God will not answer that prayer. So that is why it becomes a weakness for a baby Christian because one of the ways to know a baby Christian is that their desire is always sponsored by carnality. Their desire is not sponsored by the will of God for their life. So when you are asking according to God's will for us, the Bible says in the first John chapter 4 is that when you ask according to the will of God, he says, Hear yeah, us. And if we know he hears us, then thank God we answer our prayer. So, the first thing you must learn is the ability to convert your desire to us. To pay a point. And if that your desire is in alignment with the desire of God, it is compulsory and mandatory that God will hear you. Number two, you must know how to convert your pain to prayer point. We are going to do practical tonight. And God will surely hear your prayer. <laughs> ah, the candle like that. Yeah. I feel like prayer already. I'm going to pray with some people tonight. And we share testimony. Amen. Kai. Number two, convert your what? Your pain to prayer point. If you are sick, that is a pain. If you are passing through any problem, that is a pain. Then God expects you to convert it to prayer points. It is the will of God for you to deliver you from every captivity. It is the will of God for you to deliver you from every problem. He said, when the righteous call upon his name, they shall save, they shall be saved. <laughs> Holy Ghost. What's the first one? Convert your desire to what? To prayer point. Number two, convert your pain to prayer point. So if you are sick now, you have a prayer point. If you, are, if you are spiritual and you have a desire and that desire is in alignment with the will of God for you, you have a prayer point. Number three, convert your fear to prayer point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is that thing you are afraid of? He said, I know there's a scripture that said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said we should not worry about anything, but in nothing, make your, pray, your supplication and what? Your prayer and supplication made it more unto God. So that is, let convert your anxiety, your fear, convert it to prayer point. That thing you are afraid of, if you are afraid of tomorrow, that's the prayer point. Instead of you to be thinking of tomorrow, convert it. Can I say this to you? Each time I have a worry, I have a fear, devil himself is even afraid of bringing fear to my heart. Each time a fear comes to my heart, I've gotten the prayer point. <laughs> Don't you just need to do instead of that fear, because one thing is. Fear is asking to do that. He wants you to stop taking a right step and take a wrong step. That's fear. So the moment that fear attacks you, you have just gotten a prayer point. So can somebody pray for fear to come now? <laughs> because this, these are the things that we, that make us to pray without seasons. You are driving and fear of accident came, convert it to what? To prayer point. Kai, I will see God hearing you. You are you are you are afraid of tomorrow, convert it to what? To prayer point. <laughs> What's the first one? Convert the words. Your, your desire to prayer point. Number two. Your pain. You convert your pain to prayer points. Number three. Convert your fear to prayer point. Number four. Convert your worry to prayer point. Hedge is not by your side. I want to marry. That's a worry. Convert it to prayer point. God is interested in your marital life. You are still single and you're supposed to marry, convert it to prayer point. You are trekking with leg and you felt it is time for you to have a car, convert it to prayer point. You are living in a, in a tenant house and you expect to, to, be, to, to, to have your own house, convert it to what? To prayer point. As long as those things is not for selfish purpose, it's not for loss. Don't say, God, give me a car. car I do that, is, that is selfishness. <laughs> you don't get a card for prove a point to anybody. You are not living a life for anybody. You are living your own life. But you desire a car because you have been trekking to a far distance. You have been trekking to church. And you just say, God, I want to be taking car to church. God will surely do it. Convert your words. Your worry to be a point. You don't need to be worried about anything. Can you somebody give me that Bible verse? 
Yeah. What the Bible said? He said be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4. Uh -huh. 6 to 7. Uh, what is it? Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Instead. Uh -huh. Instead. Pray about everything. Pray about everything. Maybe convert those worries to what? No. To prayer point. Ah. Maleko shata la gada de modoya. Rekanda de modoya. What is number one? Convert your what? The desire to prayer point. Number two. Convert the what? Pain. Your pain is to prayer point. What number three? Convert your fear. Convert your fear to prayer point. What number four? Convert your, Convert your worry to prayer point. And you are telling me you don't know what to pray for? You have a fear, you are... Come back. Let me confirm for those who are following me online. Am I back online? Le Shanta Le Gado. Am I back? Yeah. So what is the first one? Convert your what? You have decided to prayer point. Convert your fear to prayer point. Convert your pain to prayer point. Convert your worry to prayer point. How can you have a pain and you are telling me you don't have a prayer point? How can you have a fear and you are telling me you don't have a prayer point? How can you have a worry and you are telling me you don't have a prayer point? And how can you, how can you have a desire and you are telling me you don't have a prayer point? And the Bible said, He said, let make your desire known unto God. He said, whatsoever you desire, is it ask? Can, can somebody give me the number verse? Where do I say it should be Mark? He said, whatsoever you desire, is it ask in prayer? <laughs> and believe that you have received it, and you shall get what you have. Whatsoever you desire. Whatsoever you desire, it should be Mark. Somebody should give me the number as we had up. Mark 11 what? Mark 11 24. Uh -huh. Mark 11 Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, whatsoever you desire, uh -huh. convert it to prayer point. Hmm. Carry. Uh -huh. Believe, that Believe that you receive it. And you shall have it. You shall have it. What is that Bible verse saying? Convert your what? Okay. Your desire to prayer point. Convert your desire to prayer point. How will you be telling me you it is only a wood, a stick that doesn't have a prayer point? Once you have a feeling, you have a prayer point. So it is only the baby Christian that Roman chapter 6, 8 26 is talking to. That there should be a time in your life where you don't know what to want. To pray for. The only thing baby has for is a role play. Even though they have not eaten. <laughs> Their, their, their request is always contradict the, the, the will of God for their life, the will of their father for them. You can never see a two year old child asking for a test book. Am I might talking to somebody now. They don't ask questions that have something to do with their destiny. And the will of your father is to ask questions, to ask him anything that have to do with your what? Your destiny. That have to do with his kingdom and that have to do with your destiny. Not only that have to do with kingdom, that have to do with your what? Your destiny. The moment you have the knowledge of your destiny, your prayer point will be alive in that. It is only when you have not discovered the gospel for your life that you may be praying wrong. Kai. <laughs> By God's grace, I've called it to teach in ministry. And you should tell and you are not telling me that I don't know what to pray for. When I know everything needed to fulfill as a teacher, I'm not talking about it now. Yes, I know everything I need to fulfill in this teaching ministry. And you say I don't have a prayer point. It is only people that have not discovered God's purpose for their life. And those are the baby Christians. Those are the people that this scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, is talking to. Your witness is that you don't know what to pray for. <laughs> And how do you know Holy Spirit is praying for you? Because he said the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Through what? Through glory. He didn't say you are the one interceding. He said the Holy Ghost intercedes for you. Through glory. How will you now know Holy Ghost is interceding for you? Verse 20 will give us the answer. He said everything will begin to work together for good. Am I talking to somebody now? <laughs> Verse 26 said you don't know what to pray for. The Holy Ghost is praying for you. Then how will you know Holy Ghost is praying for you? Verse 20 will give us the answer. Read verse 27, Romans chapter 8. 26, 27, 28. Because most of us is that we are not reading scripture in content. We just speak scripture out of context. And build a whole doctrine on it generationally. Uh -huh. Believe of 26. Uh -huh. Roman 8, 26. Yeah. Likewise, the spirit also our infirmity. The spirit of our infirmity. We don't know what to pray for. But the spirit itself makes intercession The spirit itself makes intercession for us. With groaning which cannot be what? 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 And he that searcheth his heart. This is the spirit talking about here. Hey, because he maketh intercession for the same. He maketh intercession for what? The same. For the same, eh? According to the will of God. Not according to your will. According to what? To the will of God. To the will of God. Eh? This is not the this is not the, the report card. Mm. 
of the interceding that Holy Spirit is making for you, verse 38. And we know that all these work together. This is how to know Holy Spirit is praying for you. You know that everything begins to what? Together for good. To work together for good, eh? Yeah? To them that love God. To them that love God. To them who are called. Who are called according to the purpose. When Holy Spirit begins to pray for you, at times you are in problem. Because you, you will take your step, it won't work. <laughs> ah, when Holy Spirit is praying for you, you may be seeking admission for four years. <laughs> because you are seeking admission in a place where it doesn't want you to go. <laughs> When the Holy Spirit is praying for you, the result is that that brother may tell you he's not doing it again. That may be the proof that the Holy Spirit is praying for you. Because you think when the Holy Spirit is praying for you, you, you will think everything will be working smoothly. Everything will scatter. Not according to the way you want it, but according to the way he wants it. But the report card is that you will just discover at the end of the day that everything begins to work together for your what? For your good. The process will be so long. The process will be so tough. You will understand. It will look as if your life is turning upside down when the Holy Spirit is taking charge of your life. When the Holy Spirit is interceding for you at time, physically you are in trouble. It is better, <laughs> you know, I did what I said, if you, if, it is better for you not to pray over some things. Because the moment you start praying, you are asking God to take control. Any step you take on that thing again will not work. In the energy of the flesh, it may not work. <laughs> so when you always begin to pray, intercede for you, at time, the result is that you may be looking for a job and there won't be a job because God wants you to start His purpose upon your life. Maybe God wants you to go to Bible college and you are busy looking for a banking job. After looking for it for three years, when you don't get a job, you will think everyone is closed. It is Holy Spirit praying for you. Because when Holy Spirit begins to pray for you, you will begin to take a wrong step. God will not allow that wrong step to, to, to come to pass because it can be so dangerous when you are going in the wrong way and you are going with speed. It can be so dangerous. When you are doing the wrong thing and you are getting the sword, it can be so dangerous. But when Holy Spirit is praying for you, you will be doing the wrong thing and God will be blocking it. Propose it to your wrong sister, instead of that sister to give you yes, and marry hungry, that sister will say no. Hallelujah. <laughs> because when God, when Holy Spirit is praying for you, the answer will be disappointment in the physical world. You may be taking every step and this will not work. It is simply because it, every step you are taking is not according to his will. For your what? For your life. It's said because at the end of the day you will not discover that everything works together for good to them. Who are what? Who love God. Who are living according to his what? Will. According to his will. As we end up now, it, this, these are just simple ways spiritual things are wrong. They are too simple. And in that simple way now, can you begin to convert your desire to God? Can you begin to convert your, your pains to God now? I didn't say you should pray to pray in understanding. Convert your desire to God. Convert your pain to God. Convert your worry to God. Pray in understanding, pray in tongues. That's what the Bible said. He said, pray in tongues and pray in understanding. Mix the two together. Holy Ghost. I know you have a desire. Convert it to prayer point now. You have a worry, convert it to prayer point now. If you are sick, you have a pain, convert it to prayer point now. If you, if you have a fear, convert it to prayer point. This is how we move in the spirit. Oh, convert your desire to prayer point. Oh, my desire is that the eyes of your understanding be open tonight. Convert your pain. If you have sickness in your body now, convert your pain to prayer points. You will share testimony in the news by next week. Rekatali Goro. Rekatali Mushantali Goro. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I pray for you now. For do the that have pains in your body, can you touch that place now if you are listening to me? Mashantali Goro. I don't have healing power, but I know God that have healing that I, I serve a God that have a healing power. I don't have the power to heal the sick, but I know God who can heal the sick. I don't have the power to raise the dead, but I know a God who can raise the dead. And He has given us a singular weapon. In the name of Jesus, every knee, so sickness, shall bow. And I pray for you now, if you are listening to me, you are sick. That sickness disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
I speak as an oracle of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. That sickness in your body disappeared in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You have cancer in your body and you are listening to me now. You have stomach ache and you are listening to me now. There's somebody here now that is having a heart problem. You are listening to me now with a heart problem. I cause that heart problem in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your sight should be normal in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Receive your sight back in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Le kondo le mboko shata le wana ni gadaya Raoni katani mondo ni mo shata Oh le kondo le wana ni gadaya I'm seeing a back pain, back pain now If you're having a back pain and you're listening to me now Oh you will be listening to this letter I command that sickness to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Amen Le kondo le mo shata ya There is somebody now with a growth In your left side of your stomach, a growth I cause it now in the mighty name of Jesus That's Sickness should vanish in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are listening to me now, you are passing through marital confusion. We are converting that to prayer point now. Let there be light in your marital journey in the mighty name of Jesus. Enough of that confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. There is somebody now you have been experiencing delay. I shift you forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit begin to be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, somebody is having a carryover problem already now. And when you will be resuming back to school, that carryover will be waved in the mighty name of Jesus. Raoni katoni bodoni gana. I said the carnival will be waved in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my shatale mono di gana ya. Re kotoni mono ya. Every of your worry, God will settle it in Jesus' name. You will never have problem again. Everything you are passing through will come out of it. Thank you because we are God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Oh, 